Hello viewer and welcome to Hope Channel Kenya, Light in the Family. This is your program, The Riser, and my name is Lily Kidenda. We continue with our theme, what makes the difference? And today we'd, look at, we'd like to look at this theme under the title, I have seen your tears. But before we go there, I invite you to read with me the key text for this section of that theme from the book of Psalms 126, verse 5 and 6. And I'm reading in your hearing. That is Psalms 126, verse 5 and 6. And I read, Those who sow in tears will reap with songs and joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with him. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we thank you. We bless your holy name. As we read this wonderful text that was penned by your servant, it warms our hearts that you understand man at his weakest moment. And I thank you that you're a God who understands the weakness of man and Lord as we study your word this morning I plead that you'd speak to us and help us to understand your heart that we would feel comfortable in your presence to be vulnerable you who never laughs at us or ridicules us I pray that someone out there would choose to trust you with their everything I pray that each one of us involved in this program including myself, would understand the depth of this message and choose to trust you with our very own life. Forgive the many sins that hinder us, O Lord, and quicken us by your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Friends, yesterday we looked at the life of a woman who could have been called a slave, a house help a domestic worker, working in a house of a man greatly blessed of the Lord, having received a promise from the Lord that he will have a son, God took long. And oftentimes when God does that, we try to find plan B, C, D, and E. And they did. And Ishmael was born to the house help, to the domestic servant, to the maid of her boss. Sarai. But eventually things turned sour and Sarah wanted this woman out of her space when she had her own son. God spoke to Abraham, allowed this girl to go. And as he sent her away, he gives her water. But how much water can a woman carry? And the Bible said she wandered in the desert place. Eventually she ran out of water and everything. And she sat put her son away from her and sobbed as the son cried, saying, I do not want to watch as my son died. But the Bible says that God so sent an angel, provided water, promised her that he would bless her. Friends, tears are a language that God understands. What makes the difference is our theme and we're looking at, I have seen your tears. I want you to turn with me to the book of 2 Kings, verse 20. But I'll give you a background of this story. We're looking at one King Hezekiah having been attacked by a, a powerful king from Syria called Sennacherib. In his helplessness, he goes to God and takes the letter that had been written. He puts it on top at the pulpit, speaks to God, and God acts. And God actually does the job completely, and they have victory. But in chapter 20, we come to a sad story about this king who had such confidence in God. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. Hezekiah wasn't just at the point of death. 
as he was at the point of death. The Bible says the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him to announce a verdict. And I can imagine when a king is receiving a guest, somebody probably came in and said, the prophet is here. I can feel his heart jumping and saying, God has seen my distress. He sent the man of God to assure me that it will be well. But the Bible says that when Isaiah came in, this is the declaration that he gave to the king. This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order because you're going to die. You will not recover. And friends, it is at that time when Hezekiah realized that things were thick. I am sure as a king, he was acquainted with decision making. And at that time, he had to think quickly and make a decision. Believe it or not, as we read in verse 2, I'd like to think that Hezekiah remembered that tears are a language that God understands. And the Bible tells us, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O oh Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion. I have done what is good in your eyes. Hezekiah presents suddenly to the king of the universe, the one who created him in his image, a CV. But as he comes to the tail end of his CV, I'm sure he didn't include everything. It suddenly dawned on him that this is not the way to go. The Bible says, and Hezekiah wept bitterly. Hezekiah wept bitterly. Verse 4. Before Isaiah had left the middle of the compound, a word of the Lord came to him. And in verse 5, the Bible records, Go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people. This is what the Lord says. Remember, Isaiah had come, spoke to him with no preamble. Just told him this is what the Lord has said. But this time Isaiah is stopped. He gives a message and leaves. But he stopped mid of the compound. And he's told this is what the God of your father David says. I have heard your prayer. Part one. I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. And what is the verdict? I will heal you. The Lord says. How awesome. How wonderful. Yes, God had his prayer. But God saw his tear. And he says, I will heal you. The tears was the tipping point. On the third day from now, you will go up to the temple of the Lord. And the Bible says God was specific. Somebody had wept bitterly. Somebody had come before him and prayed. And God says, I have seen your tears. And he says in verse 6, I will add 15 years to your life and I will deliver you and this city from the hands of the kings of Assyria. I will defend this city for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. The Bible doesn't add, but I want to add for the tears that I have seen, for your prayer to me, for you seeking me and turning to me, I have seen your tears. And then, Isaiah gives a prescription. And the prescription is very detailed. But Hezekiah is thinking, this sounds too good to be true. How can I be sure? How can I be sure that that message that came has been so totally overturned? Yes, I have a prescription which I will follow. 
But I want to know for a fact, God has spoken and I'd like to push that he goes that extra mile. I have 15 years promised to me. And I've been told on the third day I will go to the temple. And verse 18, the Bible says, Hezekiah had asked Isaiah, what will be the sign that the Lord would heal me and that I will go up to the temple of the Lord on the third day from now? You know, when I read this particular verse and I think of the great I am, the creator of heaven and earth, God who became a man, died that I would have life. I know Hezekiah thought, God is faithful. God is kind. Let me push just this one more step so I can be totally confident. Friends, that is the God we serve. A God who whips along with man and takes him by the hand. Hezekiah asked, what is the sign? that I will go to the temple on the third day. And the Bible says in verse 9, uh, Isaiah answered. <clears throat> and sometimes I wonder, how long did it take before Isaiah answered? Did Isaiah say a little prayer and ask God, hey, this, this is a difficult question, what do I say? But the Bible simply drops it and says Isaiah answered, this is the Lord's sign to you. That the Lord will do what he has promised. Shall the shadow go forward ten steps or shall it go backwards ten steps? Personally, I think this is a crazy suggestion. But I am sure Isaiah said something because he knew the God in whom he believed. And Hezekiah, having come this far, says, I will not take it simply. I will go a step forward and he says in verse 10, it is a simple matter for the shadow to go forward 10 steps, said Hezekiah. Rather, have it go backwards 10 steps. And the Bible declares in verse 11 that the prophet Isaiah called upon the Lord and the Lord. Friends, I want to ask you, when you come to God in prayer, what goes on in your mind? Do you really know the God? This God who weeps along with man? This God who became a man, walked the earth, was killed by the very people he came to save. When you come to him in prayer, what goes on through your mind? Do you really believe that he loves you? That you are the apple of his eye? That your name is engraved on the very palms of his hands? How low does God have to go? For you, and you, and you, and I, to understand the depth of God's love. It is a simple matter, Hezekiah says, for the sun, for the shadow to go forward ten steps. Rather, have it go back ten steps. And Isaiah realizes... I need to do further consultation. I need to talk to God about this. Then the prophet Isaiah called upon the Lord and the Lord made the shadow go back the 10 steps it had gone down on the stairway of Ahaz. I want you to know that God is a miracle working God and he didn't stop doing miracles in the New Testament. The testaments are being written. Each one of our lives is a chapter in God's words. The plan of salvation was crafted and it has never stopped. Christ came, died, rose again that we would have life 
and have it in abundance. That we would understand the depth of the love of God who would degrade himself to the point to which Christ did for the sake of men and women. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, God came. He did not wait for us to seek him. He seeks us. He comes after us. And today I want to tell you that that same God is seeking you. He is coming after you. He is waiting for you to come to him in prayer. He is waiting to embrace you in your distress and in your stress. Hezekiah was deathly sick. Hagar was thirsty with a little boy too thirsty in a desert. And the Lord had her sobs and the cry of the child. Today, God is saying, I will hear your cry. I will hear your prayer and I see your tears. I plead with you. Turn to God. He is the only way to everything out of him. It's distraction in him is everything. I pray, oh my dear brother, my dear sister, that each one of us would seek the Lord while he may be found. That we would call ye upon him while he is near. He who promises that when we call, he will hear. When we ask, we will receive. When we seek, we shall find. And when we knock, the door will be opened. May you turn your eyes upon Jesus and look fully on his wonderful face that the things of earth would grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace, shall we pray. Our Father and our God, I thank you. I bless your holy name. That for the children of men, you do such wonders. I thank you because you're true, because you're wonderful, because you're present so close that our tears make a difference with you. Our prayers make a difference with you. When we fast, when we mourn, when we seek you in prayer, it makes a difference. And when we come to you in tears, we return with joy. Thank you, I pray. Be with us now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs>